Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm gonna be getting a Tokyo street fashion makeover. Yes, we're going to Japan and we're gonna be getting made over. So earlier this year, we traveled to three different US cities to explore how fashion differs in different regions. So this time, we're gonna be taking our experiment international, right over the Pacific Ocean. I feel like Japanese fashion trends, specifically what I've heard called Harajuku fashion or Tokyo street fashion, are talked about a lot online in videos and articles to the point where I definitely have an image in my head of what I think it looks like. But I wanted to go to Japan and see for myself. So to do this, we're going to be teaming up with a local who will guide us through three different current trends so we can get a little taste of what Tokyo street fashion is all about. Now, obviously this won't cover everything that people wear in Tokyo, as street fashion is pretty different from your everyday wear, and this probably also won't even cover every inch of Tokyo street fashion, because from what I've seen, there's a lot. But we're hoping to find three outfits that capture some of what's going on right now. All right, let's go. So step one of our Tokyo makeover was to fly to Tokyo. And while there, we stayed in Akasaka, which is sort of a businessy area that's very picturesque, green and quiet. And it was also decently close to Harajuku, which is where a lot of the action is in terms of Tokyo street fashion. To aid us in our search, we met up with Rinrin, who is a YouTuber and a Lolita model, as well as being pretty well acquainted with the local Tokyo fashion scene. Right off the bat, Rinrin clarified that Tokyo street fashion tends to be a little different than the common Western perception. A lot of people tend to think that if you come to Harajuku, you'll see a lot of people dressed in like Lolita or the most recent style is like Yami Kawaii, which is kind of a dark kawaii, but you don't really tend to see that as much. And for this video, we wanted to focus on the current street fashion trends and not just on the more well-known subcultures. How would you describe Tokyo street fashion? today. There's less emphasis on the silhouette and a more eclectic type of style. A lot of people like to layer and express their creativity and put color into their outfits. Also, Harajuku is a neighborhood and not just a singular style as it can sometimes be presented, which was news to me at least. So I'm going to be showing you three styles that are a general idea of what you'll see on the streets today. With the first trend being the vintage remake style, which centers around transforming old vintage clothing. A lot of kids like to take these items and cut it up and add things onto it, so they're very one-of-a-kind styles. The second trend being the minimalistic mode style. You'll see a lot of people wearing this and layering black on black. That sounds like my my type of thing. Sometimes I like to dress up like a bat. Yeah, would I've that, seen some pictures. <laughs> would a bat look work there? No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. And then the third and final trend, the colorful layered style. You can layer things on so much and things are transparent and things are like colorful. And it's basically, you could play with anything you want. So without further ado, we were ready to start shopping for our Tokyo street fashion inspired outfits. And our first stop was the store A Nincompoop Capacity, which specializes in vintage remake. So A Nincompoop Capacity is located in the Urahara neighborhood, which means that it's just behind the main part of Harajuku. It's a more hipstery type of vintage mm. area. Hipsters, they're yeah. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> the store itself is a former cigarette shop tucked away on the third floor of what looks almost like an apartment building. Inside, pretty much every inch of it is covered in vintage paraphernalia from the 1950s onwards. And a lot of it is recognizable IP with a little bit of a twist. Looking around the store, many of the remade items are sort of like vintage t-shirts spliced with tutus. And though they're not all t-shirts, the general vibe seems to be bringing together incongruous pieces into one garment to make something completely new, usually with a new shape as well. We were also able to ask the store's owner, Mr. Ohashi, some questions about the vintage remake style. He led off by saying that there aren't really rules about shape or style within
within the trend itself. He doesn't like tell people what to wear. He says there's a lot of people who wear it like form fitting or just totally loose. It's all up to you what you see here and you just kind of put it all together. And in terms of what is in the store, it seems that Mr. Ohashi does a lot of the curating and his wife Kathy does a lot of the cutting and remaking. So where do you find like your inspiration? Like when you see a piece, like how do you know if you like it or if you want it to be in your store? That's a very <laughs> hard question. <laughs> so his inspiration comes mainly from punk, so music mm. as well as the vintage fashions. Which actually makes a lot of sense because there's a strong emphasis on DIY in punk style. In terms of what I should be wearing, Mr. Ohashi recommended that we just walk around the store and see what caught our eye. You always do this, huh? Yeah, it's a, kind of like a devious thing, like a mischief, <laughs> <laughs> mischief afoot. Immediately, I noticed a bunch of breezy tunic style tops. I know you said bats were not in, but... <laughs> It might be like an unconscious bat mm, style. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The bat just slides in. And as if on cue, the next thing I found was this. Oh, oh, it's a Nike Ooh. shirt with bat wings. <laughs> yes, get that. that. It seemed like fortune had smiled down upon me. <laughs> Mr. Ohashi and Rin Rin also found a really cool head to toe pink outfit, and I found another blousey top that seemed to have been made from like a college sweatshirt. Oh, yeah, wow. They didn't You're think tall. I would be here. <laughs> <laughs> then we grabbed a couple of bottoms to match our tops, including a black skirt for our Nike outfit. All the way across the world to wear all black. <laughs> No, I'm trying on other stuff too. Well, we have to have brand. one all black. Stay exactly. with the brand. And a pair of embellished jeans for our Central State University blouse. And with that, we were ready to start trying on our outfits. I'll be back. I right, go. Do they like the governator here? So first up was the head to toe pink outfit. Yeah. This look definitely had a strong visual impact, and I think that the different shapes and textures were really cool. I like the little butt apron. It's mm. very different, but I think it's fun. It's like, nope, don't look here. Then to top it off, Mr. Ohashi styled me with a little knit crown. We've got a little like where the wild things are situation going I on. I love it. Like this? Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> and despite how pink it was, I actually really liked it. You look like you belong in the store. <laughs> I'm never leaving. <laughs> but our second outfit brought some stiff competition. Amazing, you're a bat. <laughs> so I think that this is definitely like more in line with like my personal style. I feel like the skirt, I'm not sure what I'm doing with it. Despite the skirt being a little unbalanced, the top is amazing. And as if I needed any more convincing, Rin Rin decked me out with some accessories. <laughs> How do I look? After trying on both of these looks, I was kind of conflicted because I feel like part of the style is like what you like, but I also feel like maybe just because the other outfit's more different from what I usually wear, it feels more like the style. You know what a I'm style saying? Style transformation. Exact a style transformation. Yeah. Exactly. But we did have one more look to try on. Here it is. Central State University. <laughs> I thought this top really accomplished the vintage remake objective by transforming a simple college t-shirt into a romantic, almost renaissance-y blouse. It's like sort of Shakespearean in a way. And I really liked the jeans, which featured some nice rear lace action, though I wouldn't say they were really transformed into a different shape or garment. The jeans are like pretty normal, but embellished. In terms of which outfit I liked the best, I was still torn between the first and the second look, I thought the first one definitely made a very big impact. However, I do think the second one is very you. So that it one looks good. I think we maybe want to change the bottom for that one because mm -hmm. it's a bit short for balance purpose. So we purchased our bat outfit, thanked Mr. Ohashi, and we're on our way. All right, so now having explored the vintage remix style a little bit, we can move on to our next location, which is... Ground Y. Ground Y. Why? Is it not the air? No, it's the ground. Yes. I don't know what that was. Look how nice Ruben is putting up with you. Yeah, Ruben's like, yep, that made sense. I'll just agree. <laughs> so next up, we went to Ground Y to explore our second street fashion, the mode style. Ground Y is an offshoot label by Yoji Yamamoto, located inside of the La Forêt department store in Harajuku, which has a lot of local trendy designers and boutiques. Now, when you first walk into Ground Y, it's very black and white. 
which I think is in line with Yoji Yamamoto's general vibe. For reference, Yoji Yamamoto is a Japanese designer, described as a master tailor who is known for his androgynous and avant-garde designs, usually made in black. Sounds like my kind of guy. And in general, he's considered an important driver of the mode style. So to help pick out our mode outfit, we met up with Rinrin's friend Mika, who is a mode enthusiast and Instagrammer. So mode style, I would say it's kind of defined by a monotone color palette. I would say it's very unisex or genderless, which is a very big thing going on right now mm. in general. And I think that androgynous vibe influences the shapes and cuts of the clothing, with most of the outfits being uncinched, flowy, or boxy. Yeah, not yeah. too tight. Always loose, kind of like simple? Yeah, like all simple and minimal things. So with some sense of what we were looking for, it was time to start a shopping. I'm still doing this. You're always doing it. <laughs> I don't know. Are you doing this yes, again? Yes, I was. <laughs> Should we do that again? Yeah, ready? We'll do it again. No, ready? Nika's like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like sneaky. Sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> so, right from the start, I was a little confused by some of the items. At first glance, they seem pretty simple, but when you approach them, a lot of them have unique cuts. What's this? Like an extra armhole? It's open, so oh. I think it's just a flap. Oh, oh it's just a flap. <laughs> Very sexy. We were both confused. Yeah. So the first outfit that Rin Rin and Mika picked out was an asymmetric jacket, a white button-down shirt, and a long pant skirt hybrid. Ooh, kind of like a suit. Yeah. Next up, we found a blue button-down sheer dress. Oh, this is nice. But well, we need an inner, yeah. Too sexy. Too sexy? Because it's too see-through. Which we de-sexified with like a matching blue shift dress underneath. And for our last option... This looks cool. Yeah, I recommend this. We went for a white maxi shirt with a geometric pattern on the right shoulder. What would you put underneath this, like for pants? Um, no. Just button it Yeah, up. just button oh, it. Oh, just like a long dress? Yeah, yeah, a long dress. Which gave us three mode options to try on. So first up was our three-piece suit. Here we are. Oh, cool. Nice. Oh, this looks I love awesome. It. I like like the asymmetry, you know what I yeah, mean? Like it's kind of like off center. Yeah. Because mode style pretty much ignores the curves of your body, the designs tend to play more with draping, asymmetry, and abstract shapes. And to finish off the look, Mika recommended that we add this wide brimmed hat. Oh yes. Right. Oh wow, I can hear myself. I'm like echoing off the hat. Overall, I really enjoyed this outfit. I'm not usually a hat person, but this look made me feel kind of of like a boxy Carmen San Diego. All right, ready for the next one? Yes. I don't know if you're ready. So up next was our blue sheer dress. Ooh. Oh! Is this uh, sufficiently de-sexified? Yeah. You're so not sexy right now. Perfect. That <laughs> is the goal. I feel like this was more of a summer mode look. I'm Definitely. feeling easy and breezy. With the blueness and with the lighter, flowier fabric. Rin Rin also thought that a backpack might suit this outfit, so we tried on this very round one. It looks like a turtle shell. Can I be a ninja turtle? You'd be Leonardo. <laughs> yeah. It's the blue ninja turtle. Oh, there you go. This dress was definitely cute, but I just wasn't 100% sold on it. So we went on to option number three. Oh, oh this looks nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I feel most. This outfit combines elements of the first and second look, and there was also a fun secret. There are pockets. Oh. Wow. But Yoji's garments have everything yeah, pockets. Everything has yeah. pockets. Oh. Yeah, your little blue so just, one too. I didn't notice pockets. before. So we accessorized our long maxi shirt to complete the look. And though we all liked this one, I think we were kind of missing some of that oomph from the first look. All right, so I think that we've decided that we're gonna kind of combine the first and the third outfits by putting this jacket over the last outfit, which I actually really like. I think this is like the best compromise because it's like pretty much the vibe of the first outfit except without the pants. So we went with our hybrid fourth option as our mode outfit. Thank you so much, Mika, for helping us. No, you're welcome. So what's next? We're gonna go to Wall. Which is another boutique inside of the same department store. It's right on the other side of the wall. I'm so sorry that I said that. <laughs> 
No, but it's, it's literally right next door. All right, so let's go. So unlike ground Y and a nincompoop capacity, which focus more on a singular trend or aesthetic, Wall carries clothes from a range of designers that reflect a few different trends. The concept of the store is Japan in 10 years. It's also one of Rin Rin's favorite stores. And in fact, the dress she's wearing here is actually from Wall. But what we were searching for was an outfit that would exemplify what Rin Rin described as the colorful layered trend. All right, well, let's get to it. Yeah. So one of the objectives of this trend is to just wear a lot of different garments. Basically piling on as many clothes as you can. And oftentimes with extra appliques or fabric stitched onto or hanging off of the layered garments. What would you even lips? call this? Yeah. Maybe, they're like nap yeah, napkin flowers. <laughs> no, lotus are more open, I think. You know, I have no idea what I'm Yeah, what are you- Orchids? We never did figure out what kind of flower it is. My best guess is a campanula flower. Don't at me. But regardless, we needed to find a bottom to complete our first option. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's like pants but pants. Wow, they're pants that have been it's eaten like by other pants. Extended pants. And yes, they are also littered with embroidered mice. I needed to try them on. You've heard of Pizza Rat. Have you heard of Thigh Rat? What is Pizza Rat? <laughs> pizza Rat's the rat that yeah. like was dragging an entire piece of pizza in the New York in subway. The New York subway, oh, wow. yeah. While shopping, we also encountered another aspect of the trend, which is that a lot of the items are loose and oversized. Look at those sleeves. Yes. Oh my god. It's not quite a bat wing, it's almost like a manatee's flipper. I'm not sure we could, in good conscience, follow up the mice pants with the manatee jacket, but we did find another oversized item. This long and patchworked t-shirt. Oh, you know what? That looks like a baggy 90s teenager. <laughs> yes, almost like the guys at Cher's high school in Clueless. And to pair with it, we grabbed some also patchworked jeans. And for our third option, we wanted to try something that was a little more vibrant to make sure we got to the colorful part of the colorful layered look. Oh, that's, that's really cute. cute. Yeah. <gasps> I like the pink, but I want to layer something over it. Of course, we must. We must. So Rin Rin grabbed this dusty rose slip from off of another hanger. We couldn't find another layering piece, so we're no. just um, we're DIYing. Yes. And with that completing our third outfit, we began attacking our pile of clothes. Oh my god! <laughs> I love the rats more than I thought I would. If you can take a second to not look at the extended mouse pants, Rin Rin and I also really liked the top. It's very spring. I'm a blooming flower. And though I'll say I did enjoy the rats, I think it just overpowered the other layers too much. It's not called the colorful rat trend. So we moved on to our 90s high school boy outfit. Here we go. Ooh. I was surprised by how much I liked this look. For some reason, I feel like pretty comfortable in it. That might be because it's a giant t-shirt, but I feel like pretty like, yeah, like I could wear this around. This was also a big hit with the shop staff at Wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that was a good reaction. Yeah. <laughs> Who suggested we accessorize it with a bold graphic earring. Though we were feeling pretty good about this outfit, we still wanted to try our last one on for good measure, which actually turned out to be no easy feat. It took me so long to get into this, you guys. Rin Rin like came off like off camera and like had to help me into this. What I will say about this outfit is that the undershirt skirt thing is super cool and I love the sleeves. Yeah. But I think that the over layer is like a little tight on my booty. Oh no, sexy. Which I don't think is the vibe we're going for. Right. As we mentioned with the layered trend, you usually want things to be oversized and flowy. And though I think we had the right idea with the layering, unfortunately, those ideas were just eclipsed by the booty. Hi, right, Tavia, show us. So we decided to go with a little bit of a mashup for our final look. <gasps> All right. I think we nailed it. So this We've got it. is the second outfit with the jacket from the first outfit on top of it. I think this kind of brings everything that we liked from the second outfit and then just adds another layer on top of it. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is the perfect one. So with Rin Rin's approval, we got our final Tokyo street fashion outfit. So now we have three outfits that embody like three different Tokyo street styles, but we don't have any of the finishing touches like the makeup or the shoes, or the bags and right. stuff. So we're gonna do a little um, exploring and see what we can find. And then we'll uh, see our finished looks. For a quick shoe stop, 
we dropped by a store called Tokyo Bopper to pick up a pair of stompy shoes to pair with the mode outfit. And the next day, we went with Rin Rin to a drugstore to grab a couple of products to put together a Tokyo-inspired makeup look. So what I wanted to incorporate this time is a trendy like pop of color since we're heading into summer. The focus of this makeup look is definitely the eyes, as we added some highlighter to the lower lids to make them look bigger, and used some turquoise liner for that pop of color that Rin Rin had mentioned. So you already have that droopy eye look, which is an ideal look here is to bring your eyes down. It looks mm. like you're kinder. Oh, yeah. that's a very nice thing to say. Thank you. We also applied some some cream blush on my cheekbones and under eyes. I'm hoping the cream blush will like bring in that dewiness. Since dewy skin is a popular goal in a lot of Japanese makeup looks. And then with a dash of semi-sheer lipstick, we were ready to go. Cute. But this is definitely a summer look. I'm not gonna say like this is like the general like Tokyo street fashion look. Do I look summery? Like a sweet summer child? Yes. <laughs> So the first street fashion look we took out on the town was the vintage remake outfit, which included our remade Batwing Nike top, these fluttery Adidas pants. The pants have some flair. In fact, they've got multiple flares. And a pair of black combat boots that I had brought from home. On my face, I was rocking our pop of color summer makeup look. And for my hair, Rin Rin had gone ham with some bobby pins. The sideburn on full display. So for this first outfit, Rin Rin was able to come out vlogging with us for a bit. You guys are the Bat Twins right now. So she could help us take street snapper style photos of the outfit. All right, don't get hit, Saf. In Harajuku, photographers will line up on the main street and ask passerby who they think have cool outfits on to take photos of them, hence street snap. Tyler was taking street snaps of me and Rin Rin together, and there was like a dude almost looked like he was posing with us, like on his phone, like three of us. He's just posh as hell all the time. I think that overall, this is probably my favorite outfit. It's definitely like more shapeless than I would usually go. But besides that, like it's pretty up my alley. I'm not usually one to wear Nike sportswear, but that's because they tend to not have giant bat wings attached. So in this case, the vintage remake style has bridged that gap for me. You look so dramatic, but comfortable at the same time. That is like literally exactly what I want. This is comfortable vampire. In, yes. <laughs> yes. I may have also felt at home in this outfit because it reminded me of some of the unusual clothing items we've tried in the past. This outfit is kind of like if the band Ruffle T-shirt and the Y Project like long sleeve denim jacket had a love child. I think it captures a lot of the fun of the giant four foot sleeves without the added danger of hitting someone with a large denim tube. The only real obstacle I could think of with this outfit was that because there's a lot of stuff hanging off of it, it feels like you could accidentally dip it right into your food or drink. All right. I'm gonna push my sleeves up and get to work. I think we did okay with our ramen this time, but it's definitely something to look out for. So next up was our mode look. I'm a mode gargoyle. <laughs> Is that like a Nova babe for mode? Hashtag mode gargoyle. For the completed outfit, I donned our white maxi shirt, asymmetric jacket, wide brimmed hat, and these shoes that we got at Tokyo Bopper. For my makeup, I substituted the pop of color out for some plain black eyeliner, though I kept the cheeks flushed. Rin Rin also suggested that we could slick my hair back for this outfit, but my hair has to be curled for the wall outfit, and um, there was only one time that the hairstylist could take me in, so it's curly. Even though this look is color-wise definitely in my zone, I would say that it's much more formal and structured than I would usually go. I feel kind of like a business casual Dementor. <laughs> but nonetheless, there was something theatrical about it that I loved. <laughs> In particular, the hat was like the best prop. Part of you is bird-like. <laughs> I think it's the beak. Yeah. And it kind of gave me a personal cave under which I could perform my mischief. I'm under the brim. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. I don't like it there. I need an adult. 
Welcome to the dark place. Oh my god, get out of here. <laughs> I will say it was a little sweaty, probably since it was late May, but the no pants aspect made it bearable at least. So I've got swamp bra, but not swamp butt. But despite any swampiness, I actually enjoyed wearing and vlogging in this outfit the most. Maybe even though I wouldn't wear this entire outfit together in the US, I might wear this entire outfit together in the US. <laughs> <laughs> you should. And our final street fashion look was our colorful, layered outfit from Wall, which included our oversized t-shirt, patchwork jeans, and yellow unknown flower jacket. So for this outfit, Rin Rin recommended that we accessorize it with white sneakers that I brought from home actually because my feet are rather large for Japanese sizes, these orange earrings that we also got at Wall at La Forêt, and some curly hair. I also subbed in some yellow eyeliner to match our jacket. Now, for all three of these outfits, we were vlogging in the same area of Harajuku, which happened to be just a few subway stops away from our hotel. I'm engaging my abs. <laughs> Train service. So we kept going there because we knew how to get there. Though I think that this outfit matches the aesthetics of the Harajuku neighborhood itself the most closely. <laughs> like with this giant teddy bear. Now that is some serious layering. And this amazingly cute multicolored ice cream. I think as is getting more melted, I think we should get that away from the layered clothing. Though this outfit is definitely the furthest away from my usual style, and not just because of the color, but also because of the silhouette and texture. I'm almost just like a mountain of clothes. Yeah. Though I didn't mind being a moving pile of laundry. I like how it flows as I move. I weirdly like this sort of like kilt at the bottom. Yeah. The half kilt. The only thing I didn't really like about the layered look was the effect that the layers had on my body temperature. As in, I was warm. Warmer than I was even in my full-on mode suit. But there's a nice breeze coming down this alley. Yeah. I'm just kind of like opening up the air ducts. I had to fight the inclination to take off some of the layers. It's supposed to be the colorful layered look. So I had to stay layered. But I think that for more everyday wear, I'll probably don these items separately as I like them all individually. Specifically, I love the pants, which you can barely see <laughs> yeah. in this outfit. All right. So those were my Tokyo street fashion looks. Even though these outfits are supposed to represent three different trends, there are some commonalities between them that are kind of emblematic of Tokyo fashion in general. All of them are sort of like long, and in general I'm pretty like covered, just to provide I guess like maximum area for more layering. And they're all also kind of asymmetric. This one has a little sort of half kilt, and all the other ones have their own little asymmetric flares. I think that all three of these outfits are pretty different from current US fashion trends, at least the ones I'm aware of. And Rin Rin seems to be right in that there is more of an emphasis on layering and draping, and the clothes seem to skew a bit looser overall. But regardless, I'm excited to bring these looks back to the US because I feel like I can incorporate different items from them into my own wardrobe. And in some cases, just wear them head to toe exactly as is. We're going to make mode gargoyle a thing, if it's the last thing I do. Thank you guys guys so much for watching and a big thank you to Rin Rin for helping us out with this video. I've linked both of her channels in the description below, one of which is in Japanese with English subtitles and one of which is her English channel. So go check those out. If you liked that video, make sure to shamash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to shamash that subscribe button. A big shout out to Rochelle for watching. Thanks for watching Rochelle and I will see you guys a next time.